In this lesson, we're going to explore some of the limits that algorithms have. And we're going to look at two main types of limits. First of all, there are what are known as undecidable problems. These are problems for which no algorithm in theory, in principle, can be created to solve the problem in all cases. And the second type of limit on algorithms are so-called intractable problems. These are problems for which we have solutions for some cases, but in general, the algorithms are too inefficient to solve the problem as the number of inputs grows large. So let's start with undecidable problems. A decidable problem, by definition, is one for which an algorithm can be constructed to answer yes or no to make a decision for all possible inputs. A simple example would be the problem of determining whether a number m is even or not. So given any number m, we can write an algorithm that will answer yes or no that that number is even. An undecidable problem, by contrast is one for which no algorithm can be constructed that will always lead to a correct yes or no answer. And this is a highly theoretical area of computer science research, so we're not going to go into details, but we do want you to know that in the 1930s, Alan Turing, one of the first computer scientists and one of the most famous, proved that there are undecidable problems. The proof focused on a problem that's very easy to state. It's the so-called halting problem. Given an arbitrary computer program with an arbitrary input, decide whether or not it has an infinite loop. Now this problem can be solved for certain small programs such as the ones we've been writing, but in general there is no way to solve this problem for any program and any inputs. And that's what Turing proved and it was quite a revelation at the time because at the time it was thought algorithms could solve any problem. Computer scientists have identified many undecidable problems and you can look uh, at this page on Wikipedia to see a list of them. Let's now talk about intractable problems. A problem is intractable if there's an algorithm to solve it but the algorithm is too inefficient to solve it as the number of inputs grows large. We can solve intractable problems for small input sizes but not in general for large input sizes. We can use this fact that there are such problems to protect us. For example, protecting our passwords from also, as we're going to see, for certain intractable problems. We can sometimes find heuristic algorithms. Uh, these are algorithms that work in many cases but are not guaranteed to work in all cases. Typically, an intractable problem is one for which the algorithms to solve it all require exponential amount of time or space. And to give you a sense of how inefficient that is, uh, consider this story. A king agrees to pay his sage one grain of rice on the first square, two on the second, four on the third, doubling on each square, if the sage could beat him at the game of chess. Well, if you carry that out to the end, then the king is going to owe the sage 210 billion tons of rice if he loses. So the king obviously here did not understand the concept of exponential growth. Here are some graphs showing you the difference between an exponential curve, which as you see starts out fairly flat and then grows extremely fast, and comparing that to what are known as polynomial curves for n squared, n cubed, n to the fourth, as you can see, the exponential curve grows much faster than the quadratic curve down here. And this, remember, was our characterization for the bubble sort algorithm. In this case, we're, we've got a y-axis with very large numbers on it, so the quadratic looks almost flat compared to the exponential curve. Perhaps this can be easier seen if we look at a table. So we've got these functions, 2 to the n, the exponential one compared to n squared, n cubed, n to the fourth. So as you can see here, for certain problems, even when the number of inputs is as low as 64 elements, an exponential algorithm would take time or space proportional to 1.8 e to the 19th, which is a very big number. For those types of problems, it's completely out of the question that you could solve the problem for as few as uh, a thousand inputs. That's not the case for the so-called polynomial algorithms. Those would work for you know millions of inputs in, in, in many cases. So let's look at an example of using an intractable problem to protect us. And we want to look at the problem of password guessing. 
So there's different ways to attack a person's password. Uh, you could try looking up words in a dictionary and trying them. That won't work if the password isn't a word in the dictionary, which is a good reason not to use words that can be looked up as your password. A, a way that's guaranteed to work would be to use a brute force attack where you try every possible password. So how many guesses would it take to crack a password by brute force if the password consisted of a single letter? Well, in that case, you'd only have to look at 26 possibilities. So 26 guesses and you'll find the password guaranteed. How about if you use a two-letter password? Well then there are 26 times 26 different combinations of two letters that you'd have to search through. So you'd need 26 squared guesses to crack that password. It's not many guesses. If you had a three-letter password, what if you use both upper and lower cases? So you have 52 possible letters instead of 26. Well in that case you'd need 52 cubed guesses. Again, not very many guesses. In general, if there are m different letters that you're using as symbols in your password, then for a password of length n, guessing the password would take m to the n guesses. So the way to protect your password from a brute force algorithm or brute force attack would be to choose a password that involves different types of letters, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, uh, special symbols, and that's fairly long. So to give us a better sense of how to construct a strong password, we're going to experiment a little bit with the brute force attack calculator now. So let's break here and, and try that. 